The next step will be taking the head off. Why can't you just take it off with the cams in there? Yep, so you cannot take it off with the cams in there, unfortunately, because the head bolts are blocked by the cams. Hmm. Here, 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 pretty much all of them except this one on the end. So unfortunately, you do have to take all these caps off with the cam uh, and then the cam shafts just to get at the head bolts. Okay, and we'll probably take pretty good record of each of the caps on oh, yeah. which cylinder and make sure they all get back on the Number same them, places, right? The orientation so that they're all perfectly right. back in place because right. they do have bearings associated with them that have worn into those journals on the shafts in those locations. Okay, carrying on. We did a little research and we found out that uh, to remove these cams, you simply take the cam lobes off. So undo, undo two bolts per, uh, what do you call it, a keeper or? Cap. The cap, cam caps, bearing okay. Cap. So two bolts for each bearing cap and uh, <clears throat> so we took all those out and including the uh, three bolts for the bearing caps at the end of the cams near the front of the engine. Uh, we checked each one along the way, Did no visible wear really anywhere. Um, interesting, no bearings, no, no bearing inserts on any of these journals. The other part, part to note is with this hydraulic, um, hydraulic valve timing adjustment, there's nothing special with respect to the disassembly. You just simply take the cap off and uh, when you feel like you're ready, take, just lift the cams out. One very uh, wise thing to do, take your favorite shreddy cereal box and uh, mark it front for the front of the engine like that and then poke holes in it and and like each of these caps is numbered and keep the orientation and the number in order from where you took it off on the engine so that you can put them on in the exact same journals on the exact same position on the cam that is quite important because they've all worn in to each other at those right uh, right locations you do not want to mix them up uh, i am kind of surprised that they're individually numbered that is interesting Anyway, directionally arrow. Yeah, and they have two, three, four, five instead of one. Uh, because they four. call this bearing cap one. Oh, okay. They're shared between the two common. Oh, okay. And then they go two, three, four, five. Oh, okay then. Yep. Good. Hi, guys. This is T Dog here doing a video for DIY Guy123 in his absence. So, for this video, we want to go over some of the things we did to prepare the block and the heads for reattachment and reinstallation. So what we've done here on the block, you can see the heads removed, and what we've done on the block is we've prepared the surface, we've cleaned it down to, to bare metal, it's aluminum. But before we did that, you'll notice all this uh, toilet paper and rags and stuff jammed in here. So obviously you don't want to get any dirt into your engine. We don't want it down the water jackets here and we don't want it down any of these coolant passages or oil passages so we've plugged everything up we just stuffed some uh, paper towel into each cylinder and after we stuffed it in the cylinder we poured a little bit of oil around the outside to create a seal and that does two things it, it'll keep uh, dirt from migrating down um, be, be, between the paper towel and the cylinder and it'll also cause a, a cleaning action to happen when you extract the, the toilet paper. The second thing we did was we took a rag and we folded it, uh, we, we cut it into strips and we folded it, it, I think this is eight thick. So anyway, you just fold it and uh, so it's thick enough that you can jam it down these uh, water jackets and that creates that seal. Again, poured oil on it for the same effect. And then we filled all these other holes with rags as well. Once you do that, you can then proceed to do your cleaning. Now for cleaning, uh, there's a few steps I like to do. I like to start with a, a razor and just scrape the big chunks of stuff away. Then I like to hit it with some kind of wire wheel. But on this engine, where it's aluminum, that was way too harsh. So we couldn't use that. I couldn't even use a flapper wheel. I found that was actually making marks. So. What we did was use the good old uh, uh, scotch brake pad um, or synthetic steel wool this is called and then after that we hit it with a uh, toothbrush and some um, uh, brake and parts cleaner and then just a good wipe with a rag and it's clean you want to make sure it's it's right down to to uh, bare metal we did the same thing on this front cover surface where the front cover is going to go. Uh, it's a little tedious because you've got to get way down 
underneath and uh, try to get access there but it's important to do so that you don't compromise your seal now for the exhaust uh, manifold again remember the engine was covered and we covered it not only did we do what you see here but we had an oily oil soaked rag covering this whole block and, and that just kept any dirt from getting in from this messy activity we had to do where we took uh, the wire wheel on the on the grind die grinder and we just cleaned off this this uh, manifold really well and then we did the same thing to all these other parts here's the here's the front cover same thing same cleaning technique with the multiple steps that I described uh, anything that mates together I like to do that to it uh, to make sure it's clean so we're now ready to put the head back on and uh, we'll, we'll meet you in the next installment of the video The next step we're going to do in preparation for reinstalling the cylinder head is to check the engine block deck for flatness and warpage. In the Toyota factory service manual, it dictates that you are allowed a maximum warpage of, or I shouldn't say warpage, a maximum surface deviation, could be due to warpage, could be due to manufacturing tolerances, whatever, of two thousandths of an inch. So what that means is... We, when you take a machinist straight edge, so this is one I borrowed from a local machine shop. It's uh, they're really expensive for you know a simple what looks like a ruler, but they're precision made so that they have a really straight, flat edge. So you do several measurements. You do a, a diagonal like this, a diagonal like this. Then you go along the outside of the bolt holes like that, like that, and then you do two more. Can't quite fit the flat straight edge in there right now on the video but right here on the edge and then right here on the edge and what you do when you've got that straight edge set up is you take a feeler gauge of the appropriate thickness in this case it's two thousandths of an inch and you proceed to try to uh, slip that feeler gauge under the, the straight edge now it's doing it uh, you can see I can slip it through right here but my, my flat edge is just sitting there it's not right um, if once I get that set up properly, I'm hoping that that feeler gauge won't uh, slip under there. So you do that everywhere, check a whole bunch of places, and as long as you can't get a two thousandths um, feeler gauge in there, then you're okay. If you can get a two thousandths feeler gauge in there, it doesn't mean you've failed because that is the maximum acceptable um, flatness deviation. So then what you would do in that location, what I would do is change to uh, the next size up feeler gauge. So maybe you've got a two and a half thou or a three thou, and then you try to slip that in that same location. And if you can get the bigger over tolerance feeler gauge in that uh, location, then you are over tolerance and may have an issue.